support needs service members meeting at the Fleet and Family Support Center in support of sexual assault prevention. More on that story in a moment. Hello and welcome to Meet Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, celebrating Public Lands Day, the new blended retirement system and mid-career incentives, and some reminders from MWR. These stories and more, but first, the Fleet and Family Support Center organized a day's worth of sexual assault awareness efforts. It began in the morning with a nine-station scavenger hunt. Each of the stations represented a step in the sexual assault victim process. The scavenger hunt ended at the Resource Fair at McGill Training Center. My vision was to uh, have um, one place where we're offering all the resources that may be obtained by a victim um, under one roof for one day. Washington Williams adds that the day's events highlights how all the services work together. Regardless if it's different branches, different color uniforms, we all have one mission, that's to support a sexual assault victim. Civilian partners and agencies were also well represented, providing opportunities for networking and a sharing of resources. Sexual Assault Awareness Month is in April, but it's a year-round effort. But why the resource fair in October? We kind of want to go alongside with Domestic Violence Month. A lot of our, um, our victims, they have been um, victims of domestic violence as well. And regardless if we're two different programs, we work hand-in-hand -hand and support one another. You can read more about the fair and resources available in the next issue of The Sound Off. Meanwhile, National Public Lands Day is every September 30th, and it is the nation's largest single-day volunteer event for public lands. The National Environmental Education Foundation, or NEF, works with corporate sponsors and a host of federal agencies, including the Department of Defense, to support the volunteer effort. This year, Fort Meade's Directorate of Public Works received a grant to aid in cleaning up storm drainage facilities on post. Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for the Environment, Safety, and Occupational Health, Maureen Sullivan, joined this year's volunteer effort at the Defense Information School. This is a great opportunity because it shows us two partnerships that I think are really important. One is our partnership with the National Environmental Education Foundation, NEF, um, and our partnership for National Public Lands Day, which goes back many years, and also our support for the Chesapeake Bay program, two vital programs for the Department of Defense. After the opening ceremonies, volunteers split up into teams to clear away invasive plant species. Director of Public Works Maribeth Gravender explains. These are stormwater facilities. They catch all the runoff from this impervious area here and the building, and they infiltrate that into the groundwater, and they treat it, remove pollutants, and uh, it's part of new design requirements all across the Chesapeake Bay to reduce runoff, stormwater runoff that's both polluted and hot because it hits hot pavement, um, and to protect the water quality of our streams and ultimately the Chesapeake Bay. Fort Meade has more than 450 of these storm drainage areas. And if you include the NSA campus, that number is over 600. In other news, as we've been highlighting on the show over the last few months, the DOD's new blended retirement system takes effect in January. One of the elements of the new plan is continuation pay, a mid-career incentive. And finally, a quick note from MWR, Outdoor Recreation, located at 2300 Wilson Avenue, along with Camp Mead and Burba Park, are going to be closed Monday and Tuesday, October 16th and 17th, for annual equipment changeover and staff training. Outdoor Rec will reopen on Wednesday, October 18th at 9 a.m. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.